most of what I do is actually user experience design, and so that means that I spend a lot of time thinking about why people do the things that they do, what makes them tick, um, how they think about things, and what motivates them. Um, and so I wanted to, I had a revelation the other day, and I wanted to share it with you all, and it was actually about the topic of envy. Uh, and I thought it was kind of perfect for Milwaukee because we are we're a bit of a small business market. We all kind of know each other, and so we gets around, and other people find success. And sometimes it's you know you want to be happy for people, but you also want that for yourself too. So I wanted to share this with you. So in case you ever feel that feeling, somebody does something amazing, um, just remind yourself of this talk. So I I study French every morning at the breakfast table um, because it's part of my goal to become fluent in French. Uh, and I came across a phrase that I had never seen before, but I could kind of like piece it out based on what I knew, and it was avoir envie. And I know that avoir means to have, and envie, like envieuse, uh, it's, it's envy. And so I thought, oh, this is, it must be saying that like, oh, somebody is envious, they have envy of somebody else. But when avoir and envie get put together, it actually changes the meaning a little bit, and it just means to want something. And I thought, oh, exactly what envy is, isn't it? It's just kind of like, it's not the most polite form of wanting, but um, yeah, in a nutshell. But I think as English speakers, we think of envy as like excessively shameful, like, you know, when it, when it kind of rises up in you, you kind of like, gotta check it and push it back down and pretend like everything's fine and smile really wide and be like, oh, congratulations, even though you're not really feeling it at that precise moment. Um, so you might, um, you know, you, you might just like take a moment to yourself and, and kind of be like, what's wrong with me? Why am I feeling this? And um, I think that the, the French way is maybe a little bit better because like the English version of envy is like, that's, a, that's one of the seven deadly sins. And I had to look this up. The punishment for envy uh, is afterlife spent in a frozen, eternity in a frozen lake or something like that. And so I thought, oh, okay, I guess they figured that you'll chill out there or something. <laughs> But, um, but I like the French version better because uh, to me it's just sort of like envy could be treated just as sort of a wayfinding tool for your life. It's just a, a, a way that your subconscious is kind of letting you know, like, hey, that was appealing to me. I'm into that. Um, so I, I, I started to think about, like, if we change the way that we think about envy, maybe the advice that comes along with, like, oh, what's, what do you do if you feel envy could change a bit because right now there's a million articles about, like, oh, remind yourself to practice gratitude and like remind yourself that one person's opportunity doesn't mean that you will not also be afforded that same opportunity later or you know that life is not a competition and a lot of things that sound a lot to me like denial <laughs> of feeling which I'm not about I, I don't think that's very healthy like it's sort of like oh you felt some strong negative emotions just don't feel them anymore help yourself out of it <laughs> um, and I think that's a terrible terrible way uh, to deal with that kind of emotion. And I think much healthier is to actually sit and examine it and just kind of welcome it like, oh, this is envy. <laughs> it's okay. That's an okay feeling to feel. But then ask yourself why you're feeling it. You really have to kind of do a little work to peel back some layers because it kind of rises up without thinking. And so it's very easy to be like, well, I that person's apartment looked great or they had a great vacation or awesome shoes or whatever, <laughs> whatever the thing is, but you can't stop there, you kind of have to keep pulling back layers because if you stopped at material goods or if you've gotten to money and that's where you stop and you're just like, oh, I just don't have that much money, like you've lost because there's something sitting underneath that that you're actually wanting and my supposition is that if you peel back far enough, you're going to find one of your three to five core values. And if you don't know what yours are, that's okay, but go home tonight and take time and figure them out because once you know what they are, every decision gets easier. And on top of that, um, when you're putting in the work and you're watching other people succeed and you're thinking like, what am I doing wrong? Or I just keep showing up and like, I'm not even really making progress and you're getting discouraged, just remind yourself that you know other people's success doesn't mean the same thing as like what, what your concept of success is. So like find the thing, that feeling that you're after, um, and then you'll, you'll know how to put more of that in your life in the meantime. It's really easy to see like really far down the road, um, but it's hard to figure out what the micro steps in between here and there are. So if you figure out your three to five core values, you should be set. So next time, if you're feeling envy, don't feel ashamed. Follow your envy, treat 
treat it as a signpost and um, figure out what's sitting underneath.